25 years ago or so, 23 years ago, I lived in Montana, uh, and my wife Harriet was uh, a great horse trainer and teacher and competitive rider and all of that. And uh, I lived with her and with horses for 45 years. And anyway, she would, I, we lived in Billings, and she would go over to Bozeman to teach there. So I would leave her there, and I would go downtown, and I discovered this place called the Western Cafe, which was this hole-in-the-wall, greasy spoon, great, great place to go and eat. The locals went there, and every, you could hear all these stories and everything. It was just, you know, from the people around me. And that's what this is based on. All of this is actually true, this particular point. Breakfast at the Western Cafe. Rain has muddied the river, someone says, and spoiled the fishing for today. Each day climbs on the back of the last one, like breath after breath getting nowhere. The waitress at the Western Cafe, blonde and beautiful and in demand, turns that river of coffee at the end of her hand into cup after cup, puts down a cinnamon roll big as a boxing glove smiles over her secret frown and the long-faced rancher at table number four will not look at her. The girl who starts on Monday sits at the counter all day to learn the ropes. For me, this is time without encroachment burning in my belly like a Mexican omelet. A sign behind the counter says, T-Bone 295 with meat 875. An old photo of the Roundup Parade from the 20s catches the marching band mid-stride, sunlight flashing on the tubas and trombones. Two guys remember the rumors of fraud, a small boy creeping under the timbers and the lazy sloshing of fire. High on one wall, the night-crawling skull of a steer presides over this clanking of spoons and forks. Everywhere here, Hands know their roles by heart, curling over the edges of news, drifting over food on grills and tables. An old man in a small room adds receipts. Hutterites at a long table behind me, the strong suspended men, the sackcloth, white-capped women, laugh at their inside jokes. Good workers, the waitress whispers, but they'll steal you blind. The cattle brands burned into wooden plaques above our heads roam over thousands of sections on the butts of steers and cows. The waitress goes home where she chants in her children's ears, smile, remember the regulars, keep moving. There's always something needs to be done. Use up every second of your break. Hearts that know their roles by hand welcome exhaustion as a kind of peace. An elk's head wears sunglasses, a white Stetson, and a red bandana. The bucked-off cowboy in an old photo is always flying above that arched back. Glorious black oblivion in the horse's eye. Thanks so much. And that was a, that was a breakfast at the Western Cafe by Jim Peterson from his newest book, The Horse Who Bears Me Away. And I just, that last line, the glorious black oblivion in the horse's eye, seems like it contains sort of everything to me. And it's also, there's this black eye of the horse on the cover too. And um, I'm just wondering, like, like I had my own interpretation and sort of feeling reading that poem, but I wonder, what do you think of as that, that black oblivion of the horse's eye? Because that seems like, you know, like, uh, like all the life swirling around that black eye um, is sort of the, the thing that gives them meaning or something. I mean, what is that black eye to you? Well, I want to try to not get too fancy, <laughs> but I, I, I fear that, that I, I'm going to fail. Uh, you know, I'm not sure when I wrote the line that I was totally, that I totally understood this. Again, I, I believe in this. Poets are given lines. You know, if Jim tried to write that line, he has no chance. It's got to come from some place that's that's less uh, messed up and conditioned and all of that. So that line came. So now, you know, this is years later. Um, you know, I think in a sense, 
and that's why the horse becomes such a powerful image for me, that the horse is is pure, is innocent, mysterious, wild. The horse, I don't care how trained a horse is, if you're not careful around the horse, you're you're gonna be hurt or dead. I mean, seriously, you gotta know what you're doing around horses because they're they are oblivious in that sense. They don't give a damn about they, they don't care or think in the way that humans do. So uh, there's something um, I think that oblivion is the oblivion of innocence of 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 the horse doing what it just does, which is it throws something foreign off of its back, you know? Now it's up to that rider to know how to fall. And that's what the epigraph is in the, and for the book, is that the right word, epigraph? Um, The Mexican proverb, it goes, it is not enough for a man to know how to ride, he must know how to fall. And so uh, if we're gonna be around animals like horses or almost any animals, In a sense, we have to know how to fall. In other words, we have to be conscious in that moment. Because we're going to get thrown. If you're going to ride horses, you're going to be thrown. There is no, you can't be, you can't start riding horses and say, not me, I'll never be thrown. Yeah, good luck. (laughs) So uh, good horse people, good riders train to fall. Because they want, as soon as they're going off and they know they're gone, they want to be going in a way where they're seeing everything that's happening in their conscious. So you got to learn how to ride, but you damn well better learn how to fall. Yeah, and and that the reason why that that line seems so central to the book is because it um you know it's not just about riding horses, of course, it's about life, you know, and riding yeah. sort of the wildness, and um and to me that that the the black oblivion is sort of the the abyss, you know, and the and the the chaos that and the unknown. And, um, you know, just the wildness of this life that we're all living through. And so that all these other lives sort of, you know, moving around this, this horse's eye who's about, you know, who's in the middle of throwing the rider. And, and, and then the horse sort of doesn't even care or know. It's just a horse being a horse, you know. I mean, there's just something great about that line. And it comes sort of, it just hits you. It's, I think it's a great, great poem and a great line there. Thanks for, uh, for sharing that and writing oh, that. 